Good morning friends, I'm Dr. Dalal. I'm here in Milan at the European Society of Hypertension 2019 uh, conference. Uh, this conference has been very interesting. I'm going to quickly uh, tell you about few of the highlights. Uh, as you know, hypertension incidence is about 25% in India and therefore we need to control blood pressure very accurately and completely. We all know that most of the patients are not detected. Those who are detected are not treated adequately and in the final analysis, very few percentage of patients actually get adequately treated. So when you look at optimizing treatment of blood pressure, it's very important that the first step is very critical. When you see the patient, do not start with small doses and gradually build up. The ESC conference suggested that we should use a double or even a triple drug combination, all the drugs in a smaller dose so that the side effects are less, there is no hypotension and that this should all be given in a single tablet. The advantage of the single tablet, double or triple combination, which of course we have been using as a first step of treatment is very critical. What happens when you do this is that the blood pressure is controlled rapidly, which is very important. It's controlled adequately and a large number of patients reach the target goal. So that's very important in terms of adequate, quick control of blood pressure. Now when you take a, uh, follow the guidelines, as you know, the ACC has suggested BP below 130 and the a, uh, ESC has suggested a guideline where you must start treatment below 140. Now when you see patients at blood pressure of 140, treatment must be initiated immediately. The correct drug combination must be used, which usually includes if you are using a triple drug combination, a combination of a RAS blocker, a combination of calcium channel blocker and a long-acting diuretic like endopamide or glothalidone. So I think it's important to use this sort of a combination as an initial single therapy for the treatment of these patients. <coughs> now, having spoken about the uh, initial treatment, uh, the importance of adherence to treatment is extremely crucial because we know that if the patient does not take the medicines, then the effect is not going to be there. And there was a nice, nice uh, complete session on drug adherence. It was found that it comes under three parts. One is initiation of adherence, the other is the implementation of adherence and the third is uh, persistence of taking the drugs. And it's very important because many patients who come to our clinic and they say the BP is not controlled or we find the BP high, all we do is add more and more drugs. We must first look and see whether the patient is adherent or not. But there are many reasons for the patient not being adherent. There could be reasons related to social causes, economic causes, the type of problem that the patient has, the type of drugs or the number of drugs that the patient is taking, the side effects of the drugs, the cost of the drugs. So all these factors we need to look on when we talk of adherence. Now, when we how do we find out whether there is adherence or not? It's very important because you can do a pill count. Of course, asking the patient is not very valuable. Most patients will say yes. If they say no, then obviously they're not taking. If they say yes, don't believe them that they're taking. They may be taking sometimes, may not be taking sometimes. The adherence issue is also very complicated because it's not that patients never take or always take. Sometimes they may take on alternate days. Sometimes they may take a holiday for one week. If they go traveling, they may stop taking. So these are all issues related to non-adherence. Now you can do various things like pill counting. That is not very accurate because patients may open that box but not take the pill. You can do urinary measurements, but that's also very difficult. It requires cost and uh, bringing urine samples for measuring. The more complicated methods where the pill is coated with a device or a, a radioactive material which can be detected but that increases the cost considerably. I think the best way to improve the adherence of these patients is communication. When the patient meets you, communicate the importance of taking the medicine. Communicate and show diagrams and graphs to show what happens if the patient misses tablets, if the patient is not adherent to the regular doses of the medicine. I think patients sometimes do not realize the importance that if they miss out the medicine for a day, two days or a week, how much harm it can produce for them. We all know that if you miss out medicines for a month, your cardiovascular risk jumps up within a month. So I think it's an important thing to remember. Of course, with different diseases and different drugs, the duration is different. But I think discussion is most important. Now what happens is that most doctors say that they do not have time to do that. So if we don't have time, we'll have to evolve, involve junior doctors, uh, or nurses or even paramedical people who will sit and explain to the patient the importance of adherence. Some way we need to monitor because when we say that the patient uh, awareness is very poor or the patient's control is very poor, 
most, I think the commonest reason for non-control of blood pressure is not the medicines, it is the non-adherence of the drugs. In one very interesting study, uh, they took patients who were resistant to hypertension, the resistant hypertension group, and uh, they were taking almost five to six tablets. They were admitted to the hospital. A urine analysis showed that most of them were not taking any tablet. Forget missing out one or two, they're not taking any tablet. And when they were hospitalized and they were given a tablet in front of the doctor or the nurse, the, they required only two tablets to control their so-called resistant hypertension. So please be careful before you res they talk of these patients as being resistant hypertension. The other very interesting point which was discussed uh, is the use of the wearable devices. Now we know that after the Apple Heart Watch, there's so much interest in monitoring atrial fibrillation, etc. Yes, you can do a BP recording with a watch. I've tried it myself. It did a very good accurate monitoring of the BP at rest. There was some problem during exercise. The BP was not recording or it was too much disturbance was there. But I think particularly at night, it was extremely effective because there was no disturbance, the BP was recorded continuously, wearing the watch was very convenient, it was not a problem like the Holter BP which continuously the cuff goes up and wakes you up. So I think the future is in wearable devices. Omron has already come out with a BP recording machine and there are like 130 different machines they mentioned uh, that have already come out with wearable BP devices. Now some of them, in fact only the one which has been checked for accuracy is the Omron one which is a lot of work has been done in Japan. And he gave a beautiful lecture on some of the studies that he's done. For example, when you put on this watch, they found that certain patients had rise of blood pressure at certain times. For example, one lady had blood pressure rise only in the mornings, the late mornings. And they found that this was the time when she used to have a conference or with the senior people in the meeting and that always seemed to raise her blood pressure. Other people seem to have more blood pressure when they reach home because of some tensions and problems at home. So I think the most important aspect of the wearable blood pressure monitoring would be to individualize the therapy because you will know on an hour to hour basis which patient has high blood pressure, why he has blood pressure which is high, what time of the day it becomes high. And then you can guide the patient that this is the cause why your blood pressure is going high. He may not know it also because most people are not aware when the blood pressure shoots up. So you can guide the patient as to what to avoid to prevent these surges of blood pressure. You can time your medicines or adjust short versus long acting medicines. Like you do this complex management of diabetes, I think you can manage blood pressure much better by using these wearable devices and looking at it. Also very important, they found that these wearable devices could monitor sleep and there's a very nice a lecture about sleep and cardiovascular disease and particularly hypertension. And what they found is that the average person sleeps for about seven hours a day and if you sleep less, you get sleep deprived and that produces diabetes, obesity, hypertension and increased cardiovascular risk. By sleeping in the afternoon and taking an afternoon nap, that does not take away the risk problem. So it's very important to monitor your sleep and these wearable devices help you as much. So to summarize, some of the important things that were discussed in this CSH 2019 were the optimization of treatment using single dose, single tablet combination of multiple drugs in small doses and to start it as early as possible for the patient, follow the guidelines very strictly. Adherence is very important and we need to very closely look at adherence and use wearable devices. Once the cost comes down, they'll be more widely used to do very individualized treatment of these patients and that's the future of treatment of hypertension. Thank you very much indeed.